Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. In other words, we're going to solve an equation for integer solutions. Some cases, we're going to look for rationals. But in this problem, we're going to be looking for integers that satisfy the equation 3 to the power x minus x cubed equals 1. So, one of the techniques that we use for solving Diophantine equations is factoring. Another one is modular arithmetic. You know, there's a quite a few different ways to approach a problem, and sometimes it's not even standard. So anyways, um, I made a separate video on Diophantine equations. You can go ahead and check it out here. But let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. Notice that we have 3 to the power x and x to the power 3. So they kind of switch around. But that doesn't really help us because their difference doesn't mean anything. So when you have a difference, first thing you should look for is the difference of two squares or the difference of two cubes. Because if you get that, you can factor it. And especially if the result is a prime number or something like 1, which can only be factored into 1 times 1 or negative 1 times negative 1, depending on the situation, then you have limited options. With the Fenton equations, either we're going to show that there are infinitely many solutions and maybe use a parameter to express them, or just find uh, finitely many solutions. Or, in some cases, there are no solutions, if you can prove that. So, since this is not really nice and factorable, uh, I'm going to go ahead and manipulate this a little bit. And manipulating basically means adding x cubed to both sides. Because I notice, and I... When I saw this problem, obviously, I noticed that, and hopefully you did notice that too. When I add x cubed to both sides, the right-hand side becomes x cubed plus 1, which is factorable. How? Sum of two cubes. Remember, a cubed plus b cubed can be written as a plus b multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. Awesome. So we have a factorable expression and we have the 3 to the power x on the left hand side. You could definitely use some, you know, uh, modular arithmetic arguments here. What happens if uh, we work mod 2 or mod 3 and so on and so forth. So that, that'll narrow down the solutions. Because if this equation works in general, then it's definitely going to work in any mod. In other words, we're checking the remainders on both sides. I hope that makes sense. I also made a video on modular arithmetic, a lecture video with examples. You can also check that out here. Anyways, after this quick commercial break, let's go ahead and solve the problem. I'm going to go ahead and factor x cubed plus 1 as x plus 1 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1. You should have this memorized because this is so common. x cubed plus 1, if you're dealing with algebra, calculus, any type of math, pretty much, uh, starting with algebra, uh, you're going to see this very many times. So you might as well just memorize. Now, how do I proceed? So, okay, you factor this, so what, right? So here's the thing. I'll be fa factoring is not good enough. Now, we have to think about the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side is a power of 3, right? And we're dealing with integer solution. So we have a power of 3 on the left hand side, which means we also have a power of 3 on the right hand side. Hmm, okay, so if x plus 1 is a, and x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 is a power of 3, what does that mean? It means that both of these factors are powers of 3, or each of these is a power of 3. Why? Because you can't get a power of 3 by using integer powers or integers, Multiply together and get a power of 3 without using powers of 3. Make sense? <laughs> like you, you can use a 2, but 3 doesn't have a 2. You can use a 5, but 3 doesn't have a 5. So that's what's really cool about prime numbers. They are the building blocks. They're unbreakable in that sense. Anyways, I talk too much. Let's get to work. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, hey, how about this? This is a power of 3, so I'm going to write it as 3 to the power a. Let me... Erase that arrow, that's confusing. So I'm going to set it equal to 3 to the power a and set it equal to 3 to the power b so that this becomes 3 to the power a plus b. Are you convinced that this is a power of 3? Hopefully. Now, let's go ahead and write this down. Even though we introduce more variables, this is good because now we get a system which we can kind of figure out, like, I don't know, simplify, right? So this is my system x plus 1 is equal to something, and x uh, squared minus x plus 1 is equal to something else. Notice that both of these are powers of 
3. And also, I have one more equation, which is really nice, x equals a plus b. Awesome. So this is my system. I have three variables and three equations, so it should be good to go, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to express the second expression, second equation, in terms of the first one. How so? So I can write the x squared minus x plus 1 as x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 3x. Why did I break it down that way? Because this is x plus 1 squared, and that's exactly what I need. Make sense? So x squared minus x plus 1 can be written as x plus 1 squared minus 3x. Awesome. Now, here's what it means. I have an expression for this, right? So I have an expression for that. So what's on the left-hand side? I have an expression for this in terms of a and b, and this one in terms of a and b. But I don't have anything for x. Well, actually, we do. Look at this. If you subtract 1 from both sides, you get an expression for x. It's that easy. Look at that. Math is easy, right? Well, not really. But anyways, you get the idea. x equals 3 to the power a minus 1. So we got everything we need. We got this. We got that. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Not this one yet, but this one, this one, and this one. Okay? So let's replace first this one, 3 to the power b equals x plus 1 squared is 3 to the power a squared minus 3x, and x is 3 times 3x, I mean, 3 to the power a minus 1. Notice that we got x in terms of a as well, right? Okay, so what? You've done all the work for nothing? No. Well, this looks complicated, right? But let's go ahead and expand it, so don't worry about the complications. Yes, you know what Einstein said? Don't worry about your issues in math or complications. Mine are greater, and definitely, I mean, he's a genius, but anyways. So, now, what am I supposed to do with this? I have some minuses and I have some pluses. Let's put all the pluses together. Let's keep it positive. Let's be positive. Positive mood, okay. Positivity. So, we're going to put the 3 to the power a plus 1 on the left-hand side to make it positive, and everything else stays on the right-hand side. Now, we have an interesting equation. Now, we're dealing with Diophantine equations, so a and b are integers. But guess what? You're adding powers of 3 on both sides. So, here's the, here's the deal. If you add two powers of 3, whether they're the same or different, that can only be expressed as a sum of powers of 3. So, you can't... And you, cannot, you can only do it in a unique way. Like, for example, I couldn't take 3 to the power 7 and add it to the power, like, 3 to the power 1, and then just reduce this power by, like, 3 to the 5th, and then increase this one, like, 3 to the 3rd. This is not going to work. Why doesn't it work? There's probably a proof. I don't know. But this should be somewhat intuitive. Okay, anyways, I'm not going to get into that. Let's go ahead and simplify this or go from here. So here's what we do. I'm going to set the powers equal to each other. So one scenario is these two, these two can be equal and these two can be equal. That's one scenario. Let's go and take a look at it. 3 to the power b equals 3 to the power 2a and 3 to the power a plus 1 equals 3. Great, let's see what this gives us. This gives us b equals 2a and a plus 1 equals 3. First, I'm going to write it down and then solve it. This one gives us a equals 2, and this one gives us b equals 2a, which is 4. So b equals 4, a equals 2. That's one solution. Not x yet. We'll find x from here, right? Okay. And what is x, by the way? x is equal to a plus b, right? Okay. I hope this makes sense. Oh, by the way, I, may, I messed up here. Sorry about that. Uh, a plus 1 does not equal 3. It's equal to 1 because... 3 is 3 to the first power. So from here, a should be 0. Correction. And since a is 0, b is also 0. Wow. I messed up big time. Apologies, I'm not going to cut this part so you can see that I make mistakes. Okay. So a equals 0, b equals 0. That's one solution. 0, 0. And remember, x is equal to a plus b. So x equals 0 from here. Is that going to work? Are you serious about it? Let's check it out. If x is 0, 3 to the power of 0 minus 0 equals 1. Are you sure about that? Yes, because 1 minus 0 is 1. Make sense? Great. The other scenario, let me go ahead and rewrite this equation. 3 to the power b plus 3 to the power a plus 1 equals 3 to the power 2a plus 3 to the power 1. Let me write the 1 so I don't mess up again. Okay. So now, you know, I have OCD, so I have to fix it. 
Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the second scenario. The second scenario is kind of like, remember how we matched them up? First and first, second and second. Now we're going to do the first and second. So kind of like this, crisscross applesauce. So I'm going to match it up like this and like that. And see what this gives us. 3 to the power b equals 3 to the power 1. 3 to the power a plus 1 equals 3 to the power 2a. Well, both of this, both of these gives us solutions right away. b equals 1 and a equals 1. Great. But x equals a plus b. So from here, x equals 2. Well, x equals 0 and x equals 2. Do they? Well, 0 works, but does 2 work as well? Let's check it out. Okay, you can always check your work. You don't have to. If x is 2, we get 3 to the second minus 2 to the third, which is 9 minus 8, and that's equal to 1. Therefore, our solution set is 0 and 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.